wax on. Wax on. Wax on. Hello, yeah. interwebs. That's why I was, there you go. That's oh, why okay, I cool. I wanted to be able to see the stuff. Hi, everybody. Happy to have you joining us. A few technical difficulties in the very beginning, but we got it all sorted out. So today's talk is going to be all about the alien bugs of hive jump. And hello. <laughs> yes. I yes. Okay. Um, Mr. Rachel, do you want to start? Um, I guess I should introduce myself. I'm Matt Donatelli, the um, game designer here at Graphite Lab. Uh, so I've been giving a lot of thought to the bugs. And this is our studio head, Matt Rachel. Hey, everybody. Um, excited to have you all with us. Uh, it's good to see you. And um, excited to have you sit in and hear a little bit more about what we had planned for the bugs and the other alien creatures that will be uh, terrorizing these hive planets that we're going to be jumping into. Um, we're getting the whiteboard cleaned up behind us. And then we're going to be drawing some... Uh, some pretty pictures and other things, but um, weigh in as we go along, and uh, yeah, let's get going. Okay. You want me to intro the bugs? No, I got it. Um, so um, what we were going through yesterday was just a little bit of the weapons modifiers. Um, now, at least my approach to all of this and how I usually do it is making sure that we kind of build sandwich style, so we do a round on the... Uh, Round on the weapons, round on the bugs, round on the weapons, round on the bugs in terms of design so that we can kind of layer their evolution on top of one another. Um, you know, designing either of these systems in a vacuum without considering the other is um, just a recipe for redesign, in my opinion. So that's why we go through it this way. So yesterday we talked about a little, um, a lot of variety on how uh, weapons work. They can circle around your character they can um you know you can have a shield over your character they can pass through um uh, walls. land and walls and other stuff with the wave um and uh some of those things are what's going to impact kind of how our bugs behave so i'm going to do just a kind of a, a quick a quick mock here <clears throat> let's say we have some terrain that's kind of in a c shape so we have this uh this is kind of cul-de-sac portico uh, type of thing, and then maybe we have a um, uh, this this kind of action going on here. Uh, um, I'm gonna give me another color for my for my bugs. Yeah, bugs would be. I'll oh, actually use orange. Yeah, let's use orange for our bugs. Or our bugs are orange. So so far we've got uh, you know our bug our whole bug AI is all very much in progress, but <clears throat> the way we see this kind of happening is we have. A bug behaviors, they can kind of do some, some clumping for the littler bugs, um, and then uh, they can do, you know, passing over walls and whatnot. So one of the things that we saw would happen is you might have centipede style, like a, a trail of bugs with maybe a bit of a ringleader up front um, that would uh, traverse like the walls and floors, kind of stick to the walls as they're kind of trying to track you down and attack you. At all times, these bugs are going to be really aggressive. So they're always going to be trying to move towards uh, the player or a group of players trying to, uh, you know, bite their heads off. So, uh, I'm gonna give. I need a blue for uh, for Johnny Soldier, just so I can kind of illustrate this. Can you move that closer so I can sure. see myself and they can get a better view of the board? Um, let's do black for the terrain so we can barely see it. Oh yeah. So, um, Johnny Soldier for now, um, uh, we call him Duder. And um, <laughs> so the idea is how would he shoot these bugs? Well, you could shoot them just with your regular machine gun, but you don't have a whole lot of control. Um, but, you know, we talked about homing missiles. So, uh, you know, homing would be able to take these out in a little way. But also if you dropped a gas cloud on them, they would all pass through it, right? Because they're, they're going to be kind of running on a rail, um, so their, their, their patterns will be predictable um, to some degree, so you can kind of set the best weapon for them. Um, other behaviors for bugs is you can have bugs that will climb through walls. So if we have you know, a collection of these, these guys actually passing through terrain, but the player can't pass through, um, and only certain weapons can pass through them. So we've got things like the 
you know, the wave beam that can actually pass through land and other terrain so you can kill these bugs, you know, as they're trying to creep up on you. Um, bombs and other things would have that proximity blast. You could get them that way. Um, so other things um, for said bugs, and actually I want to get a little bit of um, some, some kind of archetypes here. So we have... Shorthand. Um, so these are just kind of the rails bugs. So we also have, um, we'll call them, we'll just call them pass through. Um, then we have um, bigger bug types. So, like as far as like little guys, the cannon fodder, they might be able to approach these, uh, the player through these two different ways. There's lots of others that we're going to be kind of brainstorming on and chatting about. Um, then we've got um, mini bosses. Um, so, like larger bug types that will have very um, particular behaviors. Um, one of them that you've seen in the demo is one we call the crusher. Um, it's this bug is built in a way that he has these big kind of uh, stabbing claws in the front of him. Um, he's really, really well protected from the front. Um, so they'll have behaviors and, and other personalities that'll cause them to kind of do retractions and other things. Um, let's say we draw a quick Leslie down here. Yeah. <clears throat> so, uh, Somebody like a uh, Wesley or other kind of, we'll call them like these mini boss style bugs that have larger uh, size. You know, these are ones that will kind of be custom scripting. So they will be. Talk. Hmm? Mm -hmm. uh, Talk. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So they'll have um, kind of um, uh, behaviors and other things that will kind of place them in certain scenarios. Um, so now we just need to kind of keep filling out this list of other ways these bugs can kind of make best use of the uh, of the environment. And actually, if you have yeah. anything on that. Oh, yeah, I'm sure, sure. Things, and I'm going to start making this. So we've talked a little bit about, like, the crawler bugs, which are kind of the drones oh. in the hive society. They walk around on the walls. They climb around. They harvest goo. They do all the work and things like that for the hive. Uh, so they're the ones who are going to be crawling on the surfaces and up over the terrain at you to try to flank you. And they're kind of... Uh, the popcorn in the sense that there's a lot more of them, but they're easier to kill than the other bugs. Um, there's also um, there's also the kind of the more warrior class, and Wesley is uh, Wesley the Crusher bug is definitely more of a um, soldier. So they're kind of like soldiers in between the drones and the soldiers as well. And those guys we call Dave, and they've got kind of this this carapace here and, and claws in the front that are a little, you know, a little less strong, um, obviously. So we've got like the tiers of difficulty as well. And something we haven't talked about yet is the, it's a potato bug. Yeah, I'm not as gifted an artist as, as Mr. Rathel. So, um, <clears throat> so, and then of course you gotta have flyers. And uh, we've had some really fun ideas for the flyers. And uh, two, two of the things is, in the prototype that we have now, which again, we're only about eight weeks into the development on, so it's like really early prototype. They fly around and they swarm you and they shoot little acid balls at you, little spitballs that hurt, um, which you know can be quite annoying as they kind of like swarm the upper areas of these larger rooms and like pepper you as you're trying to deal with the other ones at you straight on and you know eventually crawling over the walls. Um, yeah, go ahead. And um, so right now they shoot stuff, but I also thought that it would be cool to have these flying bugs that were like little carriers for the drones. So they'd actually fly in and deploy a bunch of drones, and maybe they can even use an alternate attack where they pick up the marine and try to drop them in an acid pit, because we have these environmental hazards that are a real pain in the butt. Um, and like, so they could pick up, they can either deploy some drones, uh, you know, to harass the, the players, or they could pick up the players themselves and drop them in acid, which would be really unfortunate. Um, or maybe, 
And, and we've talked a little bit about the backpack before, but we can talk a bit more about it now. The backpack is your mobile spawn point. So the, the jumper or the Marine with the backpack, um, you know, you want to keep him alive, keep the backpack alive, pass it off to someone else if they're in trouble. These flyers might even try to steal the backpack if it's not on one of your guys' backs, you know, and like fly off with it. So, um, you know, fun things like that where the bugs are, you know, pretty smart and they try to outsmart you and really uh, screw you over. So, <clears throat> yeah. We got some other things. About the situational bugs. Ah, uh, situational ones? bugs. So these these are kind of like level hazards in a sense, but they're also bugs, and they're part of like the hive ecosystem. And um, so we have like ideas for bugs that are in the background, but that actually kind of like pop out at the player. Um, what are some games that have done that before, where they oh. they come out of the come out of the background into the into I mean, the mid ground and mess yeah, with the player? I mean. The fact that they go foreground, midground, yeah. to me isn't as defining as it is just um, any kind of pattern obstacle. So any game that you yeah. played, I mean, from Mega Man on forward, you know, this idea of like just having, you know, obstacles. These are just more stationary um, hazards that you know you kind of have to kind of work. It's a bit of timing, right? So there's there's reflex and dexterity required to play this game. You know, it's an action based game. But there's also a little bit of playing, so we want to kind of control yeah. the pacing and uh, awareness, yeah, like there. situational awareness. Like we had another idea for a bug that's pretty cool. It's like you've heard of trapdoor spiders. Now they hide under the ground and then they lunge out and get their prey. Well, these would be like trapdoor bugs that you know they'll give you a little hint where they are because their little pincers will come up out of the ground, and if you stand on that spot for too long or you've backed yourself into a corner and these little pincers are there or something, you know, if you keep standing there, it's going to chomp you, cut you right in half. So, you know, you want to avoid kind of these traps. Maybe there's a whole string of them and you just got to run through them all with them chomping behind you, you know, so fun things like that. I actually really like that. We just have a whole string of them. Ha 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 ha. Run! <laughs> um, um, we've also got kind of the, the defense style um, where they're not really... You know, heavy, heavy attacking, but they're, you know, blocking. Um, usually these are ones that you'll team up on. Um, you know, really heavy defense, not a lot of attack. Yeah, so like the Harvester, for right. instance. Yeah, you know, a Harvester um, or any kind of these. Um, Show me. Give me that. Kind of the, uh, almost like C-Core, right, where they're just kind of, uh, you know, these. It's like a shield. Of, yeah, of like kind of growth in the level itself. Um Ooh, that that's awesome. Like the ones that you can kind of like, you know, throw a bomb into from a distance. Oh, those guys. Oh. Yeah. Is there a chance of a bug implanting a player and a bug and causing random negative effects? Hey, we've definitely, yeah, we've definitely, um, we've definitely given thought to kind of a more parasitical effect for the bugs. Okay. Um, okay, so let me, I'm going to finish up this, answering this question. So here is Mr. Egghead Marine, and he has had his head replaced with an alien egg. And I don't know if we're really going to have marine zombies, but if we do, it'll probably look something silly like this. Um, so, you know, you definitely don't want your guys to get their head replaced by an egg. That would be bad. Um, and like uh, Rafel was saying earlier, these are kind of the more coral things that kind of sit in the environment. Maybe they hold an egg, and you want to get your treasure for them, or maybe these guys... Um, they look kind of like barnacles to me too, like maybe they block off a doorway or something like that, and you got to blast through them in order to progress. Um, well, and it's and really it's about each each of these enemies kind of being almost paired with different weapon strategies. Yeah. So you know this guy, the one that I'm just kind of calling the uh, the pod, um, is something where if you get close to them, they'll have some sort of like either you know kind of uh, area effect damage that sort of thing, but. If you can lop a bomb off from a team, you know, basketball style, score it in the center, you can kind of blow them up. Or if you have a bunch of, you know, three to four different uh, jumpers nearby, you can kind of all gang up on it. And the idea is that it's heavily defended, but it's a big loot drop. So if you get it, you know, if you actually pop the top of the thing, um, you know, you might get a lot of extra goo or, or whatever yeah. other kind of bonuses we can give to the player. Yeah. Um, but so everything we're approaching these, you know, we've got – you know, kind of endless variety of options here as we kind of craft these creatures. It's all about playing well against the different um, weapon types that we're coming up with. And, 
you know, making sure that there's a lot of variety in the strategy there. This is the uh, trapdoor bug we were talking about earlier. A little bit of concept art. We've had some time to ink and marker in. And uh, <clears throat> and the harvester is another idea for a mini boss. Kind of reminiscent of a Dodongo in the sense that you're going to want to, like, feed him some bugs. Uh, is to <clears throat> he's to he's to harvest things from the environment, but he also harvests specimens of other interesting species and brings them back and deposits them uh, in the queen room or in other proper rooms in the hive. So you know, the, the, this alien race is meeting the human race for the first time, and you know this guy wants to eat you and and bring you in for basically dissection and analysis by the smarter bugs. He's definitely one that was inspired by one of the brain bugs. Yeah. Troopers. Yeah, the brain um, bug. He sucked just, his yeah, brain yeah, out. Yeah, um, but the idea is that you know, uh, you know, fast, slow, heavily defended, lightly defended. You know, flying, crawling. Um, each of these would kind of be built into these different archetypes that can then match up with different weapon types. Because uh, as the as the fiction goes, um, you know, as we learn more about the bugs, they'll you know, that's where these kind of weapons come from is, yeah. is trying to fight the better fight against the, you know, the, the bugs. bugs. So, like, mixing and matching those kind of archetypes, like, this guy would be a small bug, a fast bug. He doesn't really do a lot of damage with, with melee, but his deal is, and these are like little kind of cave cricket-ish bugs. Um, the that, that Yeah, the hoppers. We call them the hoppers for right now. And um, they got these mushrooms growing on them with toxic fungus spores so if you blow up one that's been jumping close to you like a cave cricket's natural defense mechanism is to jump at whatever scares it you know but this thing's going to jump at you and if you blow it up close to you you're going to be sitting in a poison cloud that's going to be hurting you a lot so you guys want you want to kill these guys from a distance but they're hard to hit because they jump around all the time so maybe you want uh, a weapon paired with this that's got like a bigger splash radius of damage or or homing or some kind of like penetration that'll go through multiple things so that's going to work with these fast moving uh bugs let's see don't sit in it's loot shared um so loot sharing at the moment uh that's a really good question i don't even remember yeah. how it works in the prototype but for right now um we're going to start with it being shared evenly between the players right. and then maybe so see about certain incentives for for players who perform better um, right. The core yeah. idea is that you're all kind of jumping together, right? So you work as a team, you spend as a team, um, so that there's a lot of communication, just like there would be from a real jump team. Um, so uh, that's just something that we're going to have to evolve. But for me, from a design perspective, I think it works better as a group because yeah. we're trying to make this game, you know, at its core, really social. So you have, you know, other people that you're actually talking to to find the best strategies for your whole team to win versus just, you know, uh, you know, one person nuking everything, getting all the loot type of thing. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, it's definitely one where some team strategy as we get more and more bugs put into uh, the project and, you know, more and more weapons determined, it's going to expose a lot of, of, you know, options for strategy as a team uh, versus just like one guy playing hero. Yeah, most definitely. And uh, here's another bug that we've had some time to concept. He's, we just call him the artillery bug for right now. And as you can see, like a lot of our bugs have these big exposed weak areas in their carapace. So that's going to do more damage to them if you attack them from the rear, really incentivizing you and your team to, uh, to flank enemies, use your jump boots to get around to the other side of them and take them out. But this guy's going to be real annoying because he's going to be peppering you from a distance with like spit acid uh, balls. And he's going to be a bit harder to, you know, flank. So one of your guys is going to have to be pretty mobile and, and get around to him because shooting him in the front, he's going to be protected by his carapace a lot more. Um, so really, or, I mean, if you're using weapon with penetration, it'll go through and still hit his weak spot. So uh, really, there's a lot of options on how to deal with these bugs, but we want a level of bug variety so that you're always having to constantly adapt your strategies, be agile, be a good team, um, and communicate with each other and really purchase your upgrades accordingly so you're not all, you know, just running around with the flamethrower because, mm -hmm. you know, it's got shorter range. I mean, super powerful, but short range, you know? So, <clears throat> yeah, let's see. Um, I guess I could jump into some of the lore of the bugs a bit more if you wanted. Yeah, yeah talk about the inspiration. <clears throat> 
So we've talked a bit about like archetypes and how we want them to fit in with our weapons, but um, you know, did a lot of research on these kind of bugs. Like we've seen all sorts of different uh, alien types in sci-fi games. Um, you know, a lot are very insectoid. Some are more like you know the necromorphs, like the from Dead Space, where they're like infected humans or parasited humans, things like that. The xenomorphs from Aliens, of course, super iconic. Um, but we wanted to go with something a bit like new and refreshing. So we took our inspiration from very crustacean-like creatures, um, trying to capture that kind of under the ocean feel, even though you're not underwater. And um, so we kind of thought we would be inspired by these creatures evolving. What what if um, different periods in, in Earth's history had led to the rise of, of different types of of creatures, and and so we named our bugs the Ordovicians after a after a period in Earth's history when crustaceans ruled the world. So um, <clears throat> they're called the Ordovicians or Vicians for short. Um, they are arthropods, meaning they have six limbs, so they're not like arachnid in the sense that they have eight and they're spider-like. They're arthropods. They've got strong carapaces, um, and uh, and they have a hive. So this society structure with a queen of each hive at its head um, <clears throat> and she has pheromones to communicate with oh, okay make sure that the stream's still going uh, she uses pheromones to communicate and distribute orders and things like that throughout the hive so uh, we even have the possibility perhaps if we're able to do this to make pheromone based weapons that will disrupt um, kind of the the communication in the hive, make certain warriors get frenzied and, and attack things next to them and confuse drones and make them stop moving and fall off the walls or something. You know, we, we have these kind of options available to us thematically and we're really looking to try to work them into the game um, through the AI and through the weapons that the player will be using. Um, so hives themselves, we'll, we'll talk about the hives, they have many different rooms in them like a like an ant hive or or a um, or a beehive or something. So there will be different rooms for food storage. You know, um, oh yeah, food storage, water reservoirs, uh, hatcheries, um, molting rooms where you're going to go in and see a bunch of like molted carapaces from when the bugs had were smaller or get bigger. So we have like carapaces that are are little versions of Wesley. Uh, you know, and then he gets bigger. So um, there's a harvesting room where harvesters are usually hard at work gathering resources for the hive. So you know that room's going to take you longer to clear because harvesters are big, strong boss bugs. But you're going to get more resources, get to spend it on more weapon upgrades and bombs and things like that if you actually slow down and take the time to do that on your way down to the queen room. Um, you know, we're going to have rooms where a previous jump team had failed and been completely wiped out. And so you're going to see these like marine carcasses strewed everywhere. And you're like, no, my brother's in arms. Um, and there's, of course, the queen room, which is not yet in our prototype. And we're going to spend a lot of time crafting that kind of encounter. So we'll tease it a little bit today by saying that the queen fight is going to be a big boss fight. Um, She's going to be calling in tons of the bugs you've already faced throughout the hive to help her. She's going to be there in the background and the mid-ground affecting things with huge claws. The scale of this room is going to be really big. Um, <clears throat> and your mission, of course, is to get the backpack down there, have the, uh, the ships in orbit beam in a nuke, and then protect that nuke for long enough for it to arm and detonate, destroying the hive as you're teleported out back up to the ship. So... That's going to be the big challenge. We'll have more details on that later, but that's kind of the teaser version of uh, the Queen Room encounter. So those are the rooms in the hives. Uh, we've talked a little bit about drones. They kind of do all the work around the hive. They're the expendables. There's the warrior class that protects them. And then there is <clears throat> the queen at the head of the hive society. Let's see what everyone's saying. Can we loot the dead guys? Yeah, um, that's that's kind of the idea. <clears throat> in the bloodbath rooms where other uh, Marines had died previously, perhaps there's a couple of guns left over that might be better than what you're currently carrying. So it's kind of like a free upgrade, yeah. um, you know, bomb ammo, stuff like that that they didn't get to use before they were slaughtered. So is each queen different? 
there. Uh, stay tuned for that. Yeah, stay tuned for that. Um, That's definitely so, part of the teasing. Here, here's the thing. Um, you know, uh, think back like Metroid 2 on the GBA, or not even GBA, Metroid on the original Game Boy, um, where um, that type of idea where the, you know, there were different types of the Metroid uh, queens. Um, that's that's kind of what's inspired me, at least in our initial queens design, um, have some special abilities. So I think they'll have, they'll all have similar kind of base structure and type, but they might have special um, characteristics so that you don't know exactly what you're in for when you jump into the queen room. Mm -hmm. um, so we've got one that's, I'd say, is close to being shareable um, in terms of the concept, and then others that are just kind of floating on that periphery um, that we'll be sharing soon. Um, but yeah, yeah. It's, it's that, that's where my mind's at in terms of driving different queen cool. options. So I, I, that gives me an opportunity to jump a little more into the queen lore, um, not necessarily how they'll work in the game, but just kind of their backstory. Each queen is the head of uh, a hive, and the queens, while they communicate to all the creatures in the hive using pheromones, they can actually communicate to each other telepathically using a form of biological quantum entanglement in their brains. So that's how they help organize their war against the humans and communicate uh, kind of that strategic info with each other. And they also have different life cycles. You know, a young queen is feeding and getting ready to grow into an in kind of interstellar queen for her journey to another planet or asteroid or something to co colonize. And then there's the space traveling uh, life stage, the, uh, you know, infestation of the planet life stage. And then she lives out the rest of her life in the hive until she dies. Um, so that's kind of the life stages of the queen. There'll be more lore and more fun, you know, quasi science and sci-fi stuff as far as that goes and how that's all supposed to work. Um, but just kind of a teaser for now. And yes, it would be very cool to have, um, obviously these different queens are colonizing different planets with different elements in it. And the, the bugs live off of the elements in the planet and generate their own goo crystals and, sure. and do all sorts of stuff like that. So of course, as they head to a different planet, different atmosphere, they're going to have different powers and abilities that, that fit within a kind of archetype like, Maybe this one spits acid. Maybe this one spits frost balls because they're on a, a snow planet. Different things. And um, so there's definitely going to be some variation there. So you're not just jumping the same queen each time. But I should mention that uh, the queens will be virtually impossible to kill with conventional weaponry. That's why you've got to use the nuke. But I won't say that it's entirely impossible in the sense that this may be something that only 1% of players are ever able to pull off because of the sheer difficulty of trying to kill her conventionally. Something like that. So we'd like to try to make that a very cool kind of moment or Easter egg for those players who are really hardcore, really organized, and well upgraded by the time they get down there so that maybe they can stand a chance to kill her conventionally without using the nuke. Uh, it's a thought. It's, we're not 100% committed to it yet, but we think it would be pretty cool. Uh, give people a reason to kind of record their playthroughs and, and try to have that happen. So we're a big fan of the streaming. We want to give kind of cool streamable, streamable moments like that. Um, what else? Uh, I think I have some other bug types that we, yeah. we don't actually have. Uh, let me just, yeah, we got some flyers, harvester. Oh, yeah. Um, there's some more soldier class bugs like the Lancer. He's going to be very scorpion-like in a sense in the fact that he um, has a, a long lance-like tail that kind of telescopes and can pierce things. Um, and their job within the hive society is to protect the critical areas of the hive, like the hatchery rooms. So they guard the eggs. And these bugs are a ruthless warrior race, so they also use their lances to kill the weak eggs that are going to spawn weak bugs so that only the strongest survive. They're kind of like Spartans in that sense. So the Lancers are totally BA, and they take no guff from anybody. And so they're going to be really dangerous and kill you in one hit. But, you know, obviously they're going to have patterns that are predictable and learnable to a, so you can avoid that lance tail strike and stuff like that. Um, but you definitely want to keep moving and usually use an upward or downward vector of attack on those bugs to take them out. Um, let's see, Crusher, Spitter, Needler. 
Tunneler Egghead Marine. <laughs> yeah, we've talked about a lot of these hoppers. Oh, assassins. So, um, so there will be different, as you're moving through the hive, sometimes a different level will have kind of a random modifier to it. Like one level will be really dark and you can only see a little bit in front of you and, and things are going to be different because of that. There'll be fewer um, long range shooting bugs, you know, to make it fair for the player. But there's also going to be other creatures that live in the hive, like the assassin bug. And this is based on assassin bugs in real life who live in ant hives. And what they do is they will pierce an ant and they will dangle it in front of them to lure other ants as though they were still alive and then they'll eat them. Um, so we're going to do something like that where it's so dark that it's hard to see. And, you know, is the Marine you're seeing alive or dead? You know, is, is the bug you're seeing alive or dead? And then boom, like out of the darkness, an assassin bug gets you. Uh, so dangerous things like that. And, and these bugs, these assassin bugs, are kind of like outcasts of the hive society or parasites that live off of the society. So not everything you're going to meet in these hives are under the queen's command and authority. Um, some of them kind of are either more neutral to the hive and they're symbiotic in their relationship and some are more parasitic, but they don't mind uh, being predators of humans as well as bugs. So you got to look out for them. Um, yeah, uh, I think that's about it for now. Um, you know, we can really begin the kind of storming session now. Uh, part of the fun stuff of doing these Twitch broadcasts is not just for you guys to learn about the game, but for you guys to like throw us your ideas as well, have our artists kind of doodle and and uh, kind of share in the game design experience. We've got a little bit more time here before we have to move on to promoting the Kickstarter and, and doing all that stuff and keeping working on the game. But um, yeah, let's see. Let's take some suggestions from the audience. Bugs going to aerial take down us. Yeah, no, the assassin bugs are not, they're not part of the assassin's organization <laughs> they're not gonna, they're gonna be doing the like swan dives into hay bales and whatnot leap um, of faith i want to see a bug do a leap of faith all right well, let's do a leap of faith bug what would that look like rabel <laughs> what a leap of faith bug yeah um he's gotta have a little peak in his like face area yeah there you go yeah um his hidden pinchers um, yeah, his hidden pinchers, they look like hands, and then they're, all of a sudden, they're not. But for no good reason at all, he can jump 100 meters and fall into a ivy rose bush and be okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, aim um, for the bushes. Yeah, aim for the bushes. <laughs> um, Let me see. A little bit more. I guess we, sh we can talk about the hive structure a little bit more. Um, if I find that. Portion. Well, where would you actually discover these bigger bugs? Would they actually be um, <coughs> the bigger anywhere, bugs, or would they be in special groups? So how do you how do you discover or kind of run into these guys? So all of the littler bugs. So we're talking about most of the jumpers, most of the flyers, um, a lot of the situational bugs, pass throughs, the rails bugs, everything that we've kind of been talking about so far. At least the kind of what I introduced. These are defined in just kind of the normal hive level layout. Uh, you know, that serpentine kind of passed through a lot of what you saw in the video. Um, what uh, the, the mini bosses, as we're calling them, these are the ones that have, you know, more established um, play patterns and the assassins included others. Um, these are going to be mini bosses that, like, when you go through a doorway into, like, the next level, um, you'll have option or kind of it'll randomly throw at you one of these bigger kind of more open rooms where you're going to fight one of these bigger bugs. Um, at least that's the plan so far. Um, mm -hmm. As we keep playing and testing, there's a chance that those big kind of cul-de-sac like rooms might fit within one of the regular levels. But the idea is that when you get on one of these bigger bugs, it's going to be, you know, let's slow the, the physical progress down a little bit. And you're going to have this, you know, kind of boss battle type of thing. Um, so those are the ones we're talking about, like the, um, you know, Wesley that you saw in the video where there's one big room and everybody firing on this one bug, um, is more of a mini boss style. Yeah. Um, so we got a I suggestion say, for a centipede type bug with way more than just six legs. Um, sure. Yeah. Like, so 
at least from from my inspiration for the bows, all comes from like you know uh, crabs and other uh, types there. But you know, I think certainly, I certainly will see some of the some bug types departure from this kind of crab structure. Um, you know, as we as we start to explore other types of potential mutations that happen to this race. Um, so yeah, it's certainly a possibility. Yeah. Um, something else I wanted to share a little bit more about the hives. We talked about like dark levels and how dangerous they are. Some of our other ideas for those uh, kind of hive modifiers are, um, a fungus spore level. Cause like a lot of these bugs, eat, they eat mushrooms and that's kind of their deal. That's what they eat for the most part. Um, and, uh, you know, in some of these levels, maybe there's tons of fungus spores and uh, they're hazardous to the jumpers. So that portion of the level will be timed. Um, and if the time runs out, you guys all die because of the exposure to the to the spores. Um, other ideas, the seismic activity level where kind of you've got that the effect of the level going like this and you know you're like oh no i gotta get up there um kind of like in metroid when the the base the space base is blowing up and you're trying to platform your way out of there um other you know levels certain levels might not have bottoms in the sense that like the hive had tunneled its way to a cleft in the ground and like you know you don't want to fall off the bottomless pit. So a little bit more of a platformy action there with more flying bugs pestering you as you're, as you're trying to navigate these areas and uh, a couple of other level types. We're not ready quite yet to talk about, but they're kind of cool. Um, I want to go back to the, to the guy who mentioned kind of the centipede style bug. Mm -hmm. um, so the way that I'm trying to structure all these bug designs is, so you've got these, You've got the the littler types, right? It's all about kind of progressing the player into more complicated uh, confrontations. So let's say we have the rails bugs, as we've called them. These are the ones that kind of travel in packs of three to five or something, and and go around the you know, the top of an area. It's a, a more detailed artist rendering of what we were drawing up on the board earlier, with the the trail of bugs getting gassed by a, a cloud type weapon. So. Um, so, um, and then those would kind of progress into how would we further challenge the player if they're getting good at this kind of enemy interaction, challenge them with a, a mini boss. So that mini boss might be this centipede thing that you're suggesting where it's bigger, it's more capable, the AI is much more precise. Um, the defender bug, same thing where you have these little defender bugs that, you know, maybe you have to shoot from, uh, you know, jump over them and shoot them from behind, that sort of thing. Um, but then you've got Wesley Crusher, who's you know, bigger, has more you know, cleanly scripted AI, um, a jumper, you know, got these little like tech type like jumpers that are just cannon fodder, but then you've got a, a um, uh, uh, you know, larger mini boss that has that same type of logic that can jump at you and all that sort of thing, but just has better scripted AI. So how I want to design these things is making sure that we can kind of train the player with the cannon fodder that they would find within the level um, and then present them with kind of greater challenge by a more established kind of evolution of that same bug type as a mini boss. Um, and then, uh, you know, kind of working that structure. Yeah, definitely. Um, got a couple more little ink renderings of bugs here. The Lancer we were talking about earlier. Um, very talented Mr. Matt Stevens is sitting behind the laptop drawing these out as we talk. And yeah. So yeah, you'll you'll learn these archetypes. Um, there'll be kind of bigger versions with some mutations that'll be mini bosses and um, again, all trying to push your way down to the queen room through this very foreign and alien environment. Um, uh, there's, there was, we had this idea for kind of a caterpillar type bug that chills in the acid pools and kind of moves its way along.
Better? Yeah. Okay, we're back. Technical difficulties, hooray. <laughs> okay, so we're back, sorry about that. Um, it's, it's really surprising how few uh, streaming programs there are on the Mac. So we're actually Skype calling a PC and having that stream it out um, because it's just ridiculous how little streaming support there is on Macs. So we're going to come up with a better solution. But for now, this kind of works uh, aside from these technical difficulties. So where were we, Matt? Talking well, about... uh, we, were, we were just talking about different types. You were talking about praying mantis and yep. you were saying something. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm, what I'm putting up here is I want to I wanna keep going on this route of like showing the bug evolution. So if we have a little jumper then we have kind of its mini boss counterpart that's kind of like the more evolved version. If we have a little, you know, drone, what is the big one? If you have a little kind of harvester, what's the big one? Um, if we have the little mushroom guy, then what does one of the mini boss size guys look like? Because oh, yeah. for me, it's really important that we teach kind of that player progression of, hey, here's some little guys to kind of just get you blowing stuff up, and then we'll kind of test your skill with a little bit harder bug, a little bit harder bug, I'll lean you up to the queen. Um, so I think what's kind of driving the design in my head right now is showing, you know, what would these kind of evolved or elite versions of these little bugs be so we can get kind of that expectation. That way, you know, player enters a hive, they enter a level, and they start seeing a lot of these rails bugs. So like, oh, sweet, we're going to be up against so-and-so mini boss potentially. If they see a lot of the jumper bugs, that sort of thing, it can kind of be a little bit of foreshadowing, a little bit of staging, um, build that anticipation. Um, because, uh, you know, other games that, you know, I've you know, been playing that lead up to the boss is always an anticipated moment. Um, so that's what I'm doing. Yeah. Feel free to keep talking. No, that's, that's, that's all good stuff. And um, I guess I'll just talk while he draws a little bit more about the kind of length of time we're hoping it'll take to complete a hive. Um, we've got in our prototype, we have three hive levels and then a mini boss fight. All right now that's taking about, well, 15 minutes or so to complete. So we're looking for each hive uh, jump on different planets, different, you know, different areas on a planet, you know, different hives in general. Each one should take roughly half an hour to 45 minutes or something like that, depending on how, how good you are. Now, there's the potential that, you know, speedrunners are always going to find little bugs or glitches or stuff like that that are going to you know, that we're not going to anticipate and, and just well, beautiful things that are going to happen and well, people we, are going to get crazy low times or something. But we're st we've still talked about there's yeah. a lot of other decisions that have to be made, um, you know, whether or not we're going to have, you know, quantified numbers of bugs in a particular level mm -hmm. or whether or not we're going to have, you know, kind of endlessly spawning bugs per level. Yeah. Um, if you have quantified ones, then you can set some sort of like exploration bonus to where if you, you know, squash all the bugs in that level you can kind of get you know player bonuses attack speed all that kind of stuff um but it's, it's just one of those yeah. things where we have to kind of keep going through that design the iterative process to figure out if that is even fun so um yeah there's, there's lots of 
stuff that we can keep working through in that regard. Definitely. And um, we're definitely going to try to make uh, an AI manager of sorts that knows how well the player is doing based on a certain set of variables and, um, you know, will spawn fewer or more or more difficult or less difficult bugs depending on that. Um, and definitely try to keep the player moving forward so that when you do choose to explore, it's kind of a, I know that I've chosen to explore and it's going to get harder because I've done that, but hopefully the reward was good, uh, good enough that I was able to get this awesome weapon upgrade. Now my, um, now my flamethrower not only shoots in front of me, but behind me too. And thanks to that, I'm going to be able to do some crazy stuff and cook more bugs. And, uh, and have a better chance of surviving in the queen room when we get all the way down there. So there's kind of a lot of decisions the player's going to have to make on the fly and as a team, because you try to jump one of these hives alone and you're going to get slaughtered. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's definitely how it's going to go. <clears throat> you making a, a, a big flyer, a big well, tubby flyer. Right, I mean, <clears throat> yeah, it's just the idea that, you know, these... These little guys, well, that's just kind of what we've been talking yeah. about. I mean, we've got these little guys. They forecast the, you know, the patterns and motions to the player. Then you've got their kind of big, evolved counterparts that can act as many bosses that, you know, again, will be kind of cycled throughout. You jump into a hive, you don't know what you're going to get. Um, but there will be some of that kind of forecasting and shadowing based off of, like, maybe what the bugs, what bugs are in the, you know, hive as you see them. Um, and then kind of what mini bosses you run into. But... There's another little centipede-like creature requested by our, our good fans on the streaming here. And, you know, obviously yet to be colored and, and fully designed and whatever, but, you know, just love all getting all the creative juices flowing. So, looks like the comments have kind of stopped rolling in, so yeah, we fine. wanted to just kind of give a wrapping up... Um, kind of update on where the project is at, um, kind of our new initiative that we're doing, uh, in addition to all the game design and the art pushes that we're doing and all that good stuff. Um, we're also making a big push to make this game more multiplayer and more accessible to more people. So Matt, did you want to talk more about I'll that? Take it. I'm going to keep drawing. Okay. Go ahead. Keep drawing. 